five bells. Stand by all stations. Attention, all districts, a five-alarm fire. Five bells move in immediately. That's it. Let's roll. Let's go. Firefighters. Presenting Firefighters, the true-to-life story of our unsung heroes who stand ready to ride by day or night against our most murderous enemy, the demon of fire. In just a minute, we'll join Tim Collins, rookie fireman, and Chief Cody at the scene of the forest fire on Break Leg Hill. The chief has just reached the crest of the small mountain with word that Tim's brother Jimmy and his cousin Pete are stranded in the path of the conflagration. But before we enter the zone of action, there's time to tell you this message. Let's go, firefighters. Let's go to the crest of Break Leg Hill, where Chief Cody, dressed in his oldest clothes, has been sent by the district warden with orders for Ellery Collins. Far below, a raging, thundering wave of flame has begun to climb the slope, and up the trail on the other side of Break Leg Hill winds a long file of men determined to make a stand against the fire here on the hilltop. As the volunteer firefighters come into view, Chief Cody hails the first. Collins! I hope you're in time. That fire is coming on fast. Oh, Chief Cody, what are you doing here? I thought you were still back at Ellery's farm. Never mind that now, Collins. Where is your cousin Ellery? On his way up the trail. We'll have a hundred men on this hilltop in a few minutes, Chief. Are they bringing water, Collins? A backpack extinguishers, Chief, and fire rakes, grub hose, brush hooks, and shovels. Every kind of tool the forest service and the farms around here could supply. Good. Then we have a chance. But Collins. Yes, sir. Collins, have you heard about Jimmy? My kid brother? Yeah. Well, he and Pete went off exploring after breakfast, Chief. I don't know where they are. Jimmy and young Pete are down there, Collins. Down the hillside among the rocks. What? Well, that's impossible, Chief. It's true, Collins. These woods are a favorite hangout for youngsters from Upper Falls. Place to camp out. This is where they came exploring. Hey, spread out, boys. Make a long line. Oh, but Chief... Now, hold it, Collins. All right, men. Spread out. Start clearing away that brush. Collins, I tell you, the boys are down there. Huh? We spotted them from the patrol plane. The district warden and I, we, we saw them from the air. Right in the path of the fire. Yeah. Well, does Ellery know? Well, I, I've got to tell him, unless you... Well, you tell him, Chief. I'm going down there. Well, I'm going with you. No, no, Chief. You and Ellery, we... Well, you've got to stop that fire when it reaches this ridge or it'll sweep right into Upper Falls. I'll bring those kids out. All right, then listen. Yes, sir? Straight down the hillside... You'll come to a clearing full of big boulders. The cliff saw the boys. They were on a great flat rock in the midst of that clearing. All right, I've got it, Chief. And if I don't come back, well... We'll, we'll know you did your best, son. Nobody can do more. Thank you, sir. Well, here goes. Good luck, Collins. Far down the hillside, Tim's brother Jimmy and his cousin Pete are kneeling on a broad flat rock in a nest of boulders. Smoke swirls about the two boys but they hardly notice it. Their attention is on a strange sight below them among the rocks. Gee, Pete, I wouldn't believe it. It's like watching a parade. Hey, look, Jimmy. There comes another squirrel. Hey, not too loud. You'll scare them away. Oh, no, they don't care. Not when there's a forest fire. What inside the rocks, Pete? When they get inside the cave, won't they fight? I mean, rabbits and squirrels and... Gee, how many did we see? I lost count. Well, I don't think they'll fight, Jimmy. At least everybody says when there's a fire, the animals kind of forget everything till it's over. Gee... I never saw anything like this. Hey, look, some more mice. How did he know enough to go into the cave, Pete? How did he know it'll be safe in there from the fire? Oh, everybody, even animals know about the cave, I guess. The only reason folks say animals are dumb is they're not telling everybody all they know all the time. Well, Pete, if that cave is as deep as you said, you sure we can find our way out? Well, we don't have to go far inside. Everybody says it goes for miles and miles, but I don't know. Hey, look, what's that? Where, Pete? Hey, it's a fox! Oh, hey, no, look, it's foxes. It's a big one and two little ones. Jimmy! Uh, Pete! Uh, hey, oh, boy, this smoke is getting thick. Hey, hey, Jimmy, somebody's coming. Hello! Here we are. Hey, it's Tim. Hey, Tim, come on over. Come and look here. Oh, good grief. Haven't you kids got any sense? What are you grinning about? Hey, look, Tim, look down there. Well, this is no time to admire the scenery, fellas. We've got to... 
Well, what do you know? Foxes. Going into the cave, Tim. Yeah. Watch, there they come. Wait a minute, what cave? Yeah, they're on the rocks. That's where the cave starts. And there's already a million rabbits and a billion squirrels. And I couldn't count all the mice that's inside. And three foxes, too. Yeah, Pete. Hmm? Pete, how, how deep is that cave? What do you know about it? Pete says everybody says it goes for miles and miles. Way deep into the hill. Huh. Yeah, there must be other ways in, too, because it's always full of fresh air. All right, then listen, fellas. Hmm? That's a tough climb back up the hill the way I just came. It sure is. I've climbed it before. All right, well, then listen, and, and don't get excited. Huh? You don't seem to realize the spot we're in. Fellas, we could never make it. We could never get up the hill before the fire caught up with us. Yeah, that's what we figured. All right, then. This this cave, it's, it's like the answer to a prayer. Huh? All right, we'll get inside the cave and wait out the fire. <coughs> okay, Tim. Are you game, fellas? <coughs> you know, we may be inside the hill for hours. <coughs> sure, Tim, that's what we figured. All right, that's what, that's what you figured. Oh, wait a minute, what do you mean that's what you figured? Well, that's what we're going to do anyway, Tim. Golly, if it wasn't for knowing the cave was there, we'd be scared green this minute. Oh, you would. And me playing the big hero dashing into the face of the fire to save your lives. <coughs> hey, <coughs> it's getting <coughs> too smoky to see much. Well, maybe, we, maybe we'd better go inside. <coughs> well, now that you mention it, maybe we should. <coughs> All right, after you, Peter, after you, James. Okay. <coughs> Shall we run just for the exercise so we... Won't get burned to a crisp. Okay. <coughs> Here's the cave. Go on, Jimmy. <coughs> have to get down on your hands and knees. Golly, it's dark in there. Oh, well, here it goes. All right, you, Pete. <coughs> Fire's coming like a racehorse now. <coughs> it gets wider inside. <coughs> Look, I can stand up. Only it's so dark you can't see anything. <coughs> Don't step on any rabbits, Jimmy. Don't step on me either. This is me coming. <coughs> All right, I'm right on your heels, Pete. Don't kick backwards. Uh, uh, uh. Hey, there's plenty of room in here. It must be big as a barn. Hey, listen, you can hear them. Hear what, the flames? Well, they were right on their heels, but you can hardly hear them in here. No, listen. Hmm? It's all those animals that ran out of the woods. Uh. Oh, they'll go way back inside the hill, I guess. Oh, it won't bother us, Jimmy. Bother us? Oh, who's afraid of rabbits and stuff? I am, and you'd better be. Are you kidding? Kidding? Didn't you ever see a jackrabbit knock the daylights out of a tomcat? Boy, you do what I say. Don't go stepping on any rabbits. Like an old buck rabbit. He's a plenty tough customer. Oh, good grief. Well, what's the matter, Tim? <laughs> what a fireman I turned out to be. Huh? Well, the first chance I have to tackle a forest fire, I go hide in the middle of a hill. And, and then I have to stand still as a statue for fear some old buck rabbit may give me a punch in the nose. Well, I guess we have to stand up all the time. Uh, yeah, we better sit down. Uh, we'll be here a long time. Yeah, oh, sure, sure. Only don't sit on any rabbits, eh, Pete? <laughs> they might toss us right back into the fire. And while Tim Collins and the boys make themselves as comfortable as they can, Chief Cody, up on the hilltop, calls a halt. All right, men, ease up. Take a break. That's all we can do here. Collins! Ellery Collins! Hello! I'm ready to start the backfire. Let her go! I'm on my way. Carrying an unlighted torch of dry twigs bound to a rough pole, Chief Cody plunges down the hillside, straight through the underbrush for a hundred yards. Well, this ought to be far enough. I'll start the fire in a band right across the hill. Let her burn up this brush so the main fire won't have anything to feed on when it gets here. First, uh... Hello! Colin! Jimmy! Pete! Well, they don't answer. Well, here's hoping, and here goes the match. Chief Cody lights his torch, thrusts the flaming firebrand among the leaves of the dry bushes above him on the slope. Maybe Collins and the boys got past me. I hope so. All we can do now is hope they're all right. Golly, Tim. I hope Chief Cody's all right. Oh, don't worry about the chief, Jimmy. He can take care of himself in forest fires or any other kind. Golly, I, I wouldn't have believed it. Yeah. Sit closer to me, you two. We got to keep warm as we can. I would never believe it. I could sit in the middle of a forest fire and practically freeze. Uh, it's good old cave ought to have a stove in it. Well, even if we're freezing, kids, it's better than sizzling. Just, just hang on. 
Now there's an unusual predicament. Tim Collins, his brother Jimmy, and their cousin Pete are safe in the very heart of the forest fire, while Chief Cody and a line of tired, grimy volunteer firefighters prepare to meet the onrush of flame at the crest of Breakleg Hill. For the thrilling scene when the forest fire attacks their defenses, listen to our next True to Life episode of The Firefighters. In just a moment, Chief Bob Cody will tell you, boys and girls, how you can help the firefighters in your own town. But first, here's a message you ought to hear. And now, Chief Bob Cody with a special notice for the Firefighters Brigade. Chief Cody. Hello, boys and girls. This is your friend, Chief Cody, and I'd like to tell you how a backfire works. Now, one of the ways to stop a fire, you know, is to take away the stuff it feeds on. And when you make a backfire you get ahead of the main body of flame. You burn off a strip of grass or brush, and then when the main body of fire reaches that point, there's no fuel to keep it going and it begins to die. But setting a fire, backfire, is a dangerous job for experts only. But I thought you'd like to know how it worked. Well, goodbye for now. You'll be hearing from me soon. Fire Chief Cody and the young rookie fireman Tim Collins will be back on the same station the next time you hear... That's it. Let's roll! Let's go! Firefighters! Firefighters is a copyrighted feature of William F. Holland Productions.